All right, it's the direct sequel to the 2004 first film that combined the two franchises of Aliens vs. Predator. The rematch, the remix, Requiem, unrated. At least they didn't go PG-13 and try to cash grab for more money. It's a pretty simple story. It leads off where, if you remember, if where AVP 2004 leads off, where the Predator mothership goes to pick up the dead Predator. And a chest burster busts out of his chest that gives birth to a new race, the hybrid of the alien, the Preda alien, as they call it. And it's really got no special skills, they just put dreads on it, on the puppeteer for the xenomorph. It's a xenomorph with dreads. If it sounds stupid, that's because it is. But we at least get an extended opening space shuttle scene in the opening, finally. So that xenomorph is running around, killing one of the predators. We get an awesome shot of the skyline of Earth in the background and a skyline of Saturn. But then one of the pods takes off with only two predators. One gets killed while he's making like trophies out of like some of the alien skeletons. And they didn't just combine these for the movie. It took a while for the producer to convince to combine these two franchises because they did the comic books in the early 90s. And so, what ends up happening is the alien gets loose on the space pod and the Predator ends up shooting a hole into the spacecraft and it ends up crashing into the Colorado woods. And the Xenomorph tanks, it's awesome set pieces and props. It was done by the Strauss brothers who own their own prop company so they were able to go all out on this. It was really sweet, but like it ends up just being a bunch of video game violence, like overabundance, like shoot 'em up type of video game. So it cr so the shuttle crashes into there, and it's like, and a mini outbreak onto this small wooded town of Gunnison, Cal Colorado. It's like a mini outbreak of the xenomorph aliens, and so they send they show a mini shot. And they say that Fox didn't even want to pay for the CGI for this, of the Predator's home world for the first time on film. And it ends up looking like Utapa and like Tatooine almost. Like, they're kind of like, they describe them as the Predator condos. And he ends up leaving a shuttle and going to, he basically ends up doing mop-up duty and kill all the freaking uh, xenomorphs before they spread and, you know, drop poison and blow up the ship and need, leave no trace, just like the original Predator who gets dropped off in Guatemala in the 1987 movie, how he blows up himself, self-destructs to leave no trace. Then the then the lead protagonist ends up being a pizza delivery boy. This is where the this is where the downfall of it and where it gets most of the criticism is they just basically have to introduce all these ordinary boring characters just so that you feel some for them before they die. And then they have to give them their own boring backstory and it's like Johnny Lewis is the pizza delivery boy. The guy who recently just died less than a year ago, known for being Katy Perry's boyfriend. He, I guess he ended up robbing some 80-year-old woman and he jumped off her, tried to get, run away and jump off her gate or her rooftop and fell to his death. That's what the LA County Police Department theorizes. But that's just irrelevant to the point that the other characters are even more boring. A cop, the sheriff, who really doesn't take any action. Bums who get killed in the woods. Uh, girl soldier coming back and her daughter. Boring characters, boring backstories. What do you expect? Uh, then the sheriff is such a loser that he asks the jailbird convict help 
for help while he's like drinking, getting drunk at the bar. And then they all end up like meeting up like, oh, what, what's after you? Oh, I, I don't know. Where were you? What was it? And they're just a bunch of terrible emotional lines. Y you know if you've seen it. And they end up picking up two potheads. And they're just like, oh, you're stoned. All right, come on, grab some rifles. And at this point, you're like, who wrote this script? And then you find out it was the guy who wrote the Shaft script. And you're like, all right, typical. And he's still being hired by Hollywood today to do a bunch of upcoming scripts that are in pre-production. And then it's just the aliens running around town and it just reminds you of like Jurassic Park 2 while the T-Rex is loose in San Diego. That's just exactly what it reminds you of, but it's honestly decent to watch. No, there's, there's, those are just the bad things to say about it, but there's a lot of good action and a lot of good bloodshed of the glee, glowing green variety, of course, from the aliens and the predators. Enough so that you could just throw it in and do something else and you don't even have to pay attention to the storyline because it's a pretty simple storyline that it pretty much sets it up and you know the storyline from there. Then all the citizens and all the characters are trying to get out of the city. And what ends up happening is the military ends up bombing the whole city to contain the situation. Typical action movie ending type. That's why I give it a C. I mean, they look for the Johnny Lewis's keys in the sewer as like a five minute scene. And then there's a bunch of other terrible scenes where they read the daughter like a bedtime story. And then a bunch of scenes that shouldn't be in a sci-fi alien action flick. Like, that's the reasons why. That's the reason why it gets hated on, but still solid if you're an Alien vs. Predator fan. Give it a C. This is JBM. Click on the channel for more horror, sci-fi, and comic book videos. I'm out. Thanks for watching.